Shout the heights, how y'all doing this morning? Happy resurrection day. Anybody glad they have in, in the house of the Lord today? Okay, one, two, three. Anybody glad they in the house of the Lord today? Yeah. How many glad you're free today? Yeah. Oh, so glad I'm free. Oh, glad I'm free. So glad I'm free. How many know they've been redeemed today by the blood of Jesus? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I've been redeemed. Oh, been redeemed. I've been Church, say amen. 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 This is Sheldon Heights Church of Christ, 11325 South Halsted Avenue. And we just want to welcome you here to worship and praise with us on this Easter Sunday. Uh, if you uh, can turn your, your Bibles to Mark 16, we'll be reading uh, a few verses, chapter 1, Mark 16. Some of us have been here since 6 o'clock for the annual sunrise service. Amen. Then a breakfast was served by a beautiful kitchen committee who put together a wonderful breakfast. Even the coffee was good. That's important right there. We don't play with our coffee. The coffee was good. Then our educational department put on a program uh, about the resurrection Sunday and the meaning and the, of Easter and what it meant to them and what it's all about. And now we are here at the 10 o'clock service for our worship and praise moment where Brother Demetrius Gilbert will be uh, giving us the word of life. And we're going to be, uh, Mark 16, chapter 1 says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Mm. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For it was great. And entering into the sepulcher, the they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. Mm. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. The stone was pushed away. He has risen, <laughs> and he ain't here. Let us bow. Our Lord and Savior, we thank you for the sacrifices that you have made, Lord. 
We thank you for the beating, the whipping, the murdering that you put yourself through just for us, Lord. And we know that it's just not a story, just not a character, you're just not a, a, a mythical uh, being, Lord, but you actually felt the spear in your side. You actually felt the nails in your hand. You actually felt the crown of thorns that were placed upon you. You actually saw the people spitting on you and mocking you, Lord. You actually felt every single nerve of your body feel the pain and the, the torture that they were giving you. But you did it anyway, Lord, when you just could have said, you know, I changed my mind. Take me away from this, Father. But you you did it anyway for us. We thank you for this opportunity, and we pray that we don't take it just as any other Easter, any other Sunday, because, Lord, you bless us with another beautiful day for us to rise up. And, and whatever was going on through the week, you protected us and brought us through it, Lord. Whatever that was going on through the week, there were so many dangers around us that we don't even know of, Amen. that we can't name, but you protected us even when we didn't know that you were protecting us, Lord. And if you ever, never do another thing for us, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything uh, that, you, that we sometimes take for granted, Lord. But we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins so that we can one day have that home in heaven. We pray that you watch over the minister, watch over the flock, uh, Bless the minister to give some words to the people that, that if they're not saved, they want to be saved. And if they are saved, they are strengthened as soldiers on the battlefield of Christ. Bless this worship service that it don't go in vain. That even if you can't sing on key, even if you don't think you got the best voice, we worship you in spirit and in truth. And when you praise the Lord in spirit and in truth, he don't hear a bad note. He don't hear a bad key. All he hears is the love that you give and the praise and honor that you give to him. So we, we pray that our worship does not go in vain. Pray that you continue to watch over us and keep us in everything that we say, everything that we pray, and everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus gave his life on our side, young and old Calvary. Oh, 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 oh,
Today's text will be taken from the scripture of John 11, verses 35 through 43. That's John 11, verses 35 through 43. And it reads, Jesus wept. Then the Jews, then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming, coming to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. He's been dead for four days. Yes, sir. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, Thou should have seen the glory of God. <laughs> then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heardest me always. But because of the people which stand, which stand by, I said it, so that they may believe that thou hast, hast sent me. And when... He thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Let us bow. Righteous Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us together again today. We thank you for this message. We pray that we will absorb this and apply it to everyday lives. We thank you for this opportunity to worship with you. And we pray that you'll continue to bless us and have an amazing time in the Lord today. In your name, amen. Amen. The God's people say amen. amen. Come on, the God's people say amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of God on Resurrection Sunday? Somebody ought to say thank you. Somebody ought to say thank you. We 
gonna sing just a little bit of this. <laughs> Tony Carter's in the building. So, Tony Carter's in the building, everybody. We're gonna sing just a little snippet of this song, and we're gonna turn it over to Tony. We're gonna get you to bring up Bishop Gilbert, like you used to do at the church rock. Yeah, I can't, I just, but I just can't sing like you. I gotta do jumping jacks and everything, but that's all right. That's all right. Tony Carter's in the building. I want to be blessed as well. Are you happy? That he died for you? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four. Anybody happy that he died for you? Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six. But aren't you so glad not only did he die, but he rose for you? Yeah. I don't know about you, I'm trying to contain myself today. But I'm so happy. Died on a Friday evening. Early one Sunday morning, got up out of that grave. Okay, that's, that's not me. Okay, I'll, I'll stick to singing. That's it. <laughs> Y'all know that's not Jesus rose with all power in his hands. That's Tony getting ready to come up, and he'll get the man of God up. Well, Jesus rose with all power in. It's in his hands, my Jesus rose with heart, power in his hand. What is in his hand? They tell me that he died on the Friday evening and he rose on Sunday morning. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Well, hey, Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Put your hands together. Jesus rose with the power in his hand. 
on the page that he wants me to, to sing. So I got no choice but to sing 432. Jesus, keep me near the cross. In fact, fellas, why don't I give y'all a water break? Y'all take a water break, fellas. We just gonna settle it down, do a Willie Carter style. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Lord, there are precious fountains. Oh, Lord, it's free to walk. church of him. My Lord, and be close, close friend. Calvary's night. A trembling soul. Love and mercy found. Yes. Your mercy found. He found me. It was right there. A Oh, 
got to do verse 3. Let me get my red book. Oh, Lamb of God. <laughs> Think about these words, church. Bring your sins before me. Before me. God has brought you through something. Yes. And now you got a reason to sing. Yes. And the God of heaven has blessed us in such a powerful way yes. that all of us, if you can't sing loud on the outside, you ought to be singing loud on the inside. Yes. And we appreciate the gifts of our people that sing, and particularly our minister of music, Brother Stephen Thompson, Jr., what a blessing. And all the singers that sing with him. Yeah, yeah. Today we went old school. Man who sung by my side for decades, Brother Tony Carter. What a blessing. The master. I'm just so excited. Um, I'm just so excited today on Easter for so many reasons. First of all, I'm excited because Brother Lewis Flowers and about another 60, 70 people joined me at 6 this morning. Lord have mercy. What a blessing. Sunrise service. 
20 of the year that we've been doing that to get up early on the morning that Jesus rose and be able to worship and praise him. I'm, I'm just so thankful today, and I want to start out kind of um, slow today because, you know, Easter is so important. It used to be a day you couldn't get a seat in a church because we just understood the blessing of this great day. It's a day where Jesus rose on all power. He changed the trajectory of worship from Saturday to Sunday when he rose on the first day of the week. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. The first century church, after he resurrected, began to worship on the first Sunday. I know what happened in the Sabbath, but a whole lot of things in the Sabbath are only a shadow of good things to come. Don't get so in love with the shadow that you miss the real deal. Uh, do you want the shadow of your car when you leave here, or do you need your car when you leave here? Uh, shadows tell you stuff, a representation, but you want the real deal to go forward. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go have a word. But you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to do something a little different. I just want to hear one more song. i got to hurry up because i got to preach one more time. Uh, but uh, I think it's time, but I just want to hear this song, Harvest Time. Yeah. Give me one verse of that, and then I'm going to move forward, I know. But when you're old preacher, you just can do whatever you want to. I got an Easter sermon to preach. I only got 20 minutes. Good afternoon, Sheldon Heights. Well, you got to give him what he wants. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I come, I come to receive, to receive my blessing, patiently waiting, patiently waiting, for the harvest, for the harvest is now, well, I got an Hebrew, I got an Hebrew, and that kind of faith. Tony Carter, Brother Wood, Stephen Thompson. 
It's harvest time. Whoo! A lot of people sing it, but nobody sings it like him. He got one foot in Sheldon and one down in Mississippi. Nobody singing like that. Whew. Our text for this Easter Sunday, the sermon title that I started this morning, He Still Moves Stones. In the 11th chapter of the book of John, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem where he would be crucified. He gets a telegram that somebody he loves and knows very closely is sick. There are three siblings that were close to him, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. The telegram said, Lazarus is sick. Get here in a hurry. But I stopped by to tell you, God is always on his time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still call his name, bend your knees in prayer, but God is on his time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Took him four days, and when he got there, Lazarus was dead. Yeah. The Bible says, the Bible says that, the Bible said that, the sister said that, Lord, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus, the Bible says, in one of my favorite verses, we had to say a verse around the table to eat in my house. I don't know about your house. Some days I've been tired. Some days I've been in school long. Some days I can't remember the scripture. But if I got first, I would use John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. Jesus. Y'all know after the morning, uh, when I got the when I got the song leaders, the minister of music mic, I started singing. At six o'clock this morning, I got the wrong mic. That was a preaching mic, but it's a singing mic. I'm I'm about to help myself today. But I got to get through this sermon so we can move forward. But they said, Lord, if you had been here, our brother had not died. He would not have died. And then the Bible says in a very uh, amazing statement, Jesus says, show me where you laid him. By this time, one of the sisters says that, Lord, by now, four days later, he's starting to stink. In other words, she was saying that he was in a position, he was in a place where there was no hope. I want you all to know that if you live this life long enough, you're going to be in a place where it looks like there's no hope. You'll find yourself in a situation. You'll find yourself in a circumstance. You'll find yourself in a place where it looks like there's no hope. And every no hope situation has something that's similar. Looks like death has taken place. Sometimes we end up in dead relationships. Sometimes we end up in dead jobs. Sometimes we in dead neighborhoods. Sometimes we have dead relationship with friends. Sometimes we end up in dead places. Dead financial places look like that even your money mm, is funny. You can't even pay attention. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes we end up in dead situations with our health. Where the doctor said, we can't do no more. But this sermon is all about Jesus still has the ability to move stones from dead places. Moving stones is an idea that there's still hope when it looks like there's no hope. What the Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, he says we have a lively hope yes, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I get excited on resurrection morning because I know there's some hope in my life because Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. You might have resurrection on that getting up day to go to heaven. But there's some days down here. Yes, sir. He lifts us up. Yes. I'm looking at people today I know got a testimony. 
you know you was on your way out. But God brought you back in. I'm looking at people today that know your financial situation was bankrupt. But God brought you back. I'm looking at people today whose health used to be, mm, you're not going to make it. But you still hear the doctor's gone that made the proclamation. All I'm saying today is that he's still moving stones in dead situations that looks like there's no hope. And I stop by to tell you, you if you've been through some, you know it's true. If you're gonna go through some, you ought to realize that God is still able to stand up in dead places and bring people back to life. The Bible said, Jesus said, show me where you lay. My Mary and Martha said, well, 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 he been in the grave four days. Right now, he should be stinking. Back in the day, they didn't embalm people that can, because three or four days, we have service. But the reason that people are still okay, because they've embalmed and put some fluid so you can have your service. But they didn't do that like then. They buried them quickly. When waiting days, when Jesus got to the, to the place where they buried him, uh, they, there was some skeptics. You gotta understand, there's always gonna be some spectators yes, with, the, with some skepticism. Right. Mm -hmm. They're gonna talk about what cannot be done. Right. Yeah. You gotta be careful who you talk to when you have a situation going on. Yes, you gotta be careful who you listen to when you got a situation. Sometimes you listen to the wrong person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You come tell somebody, you know, I got cancer. They tell you, my daddy died of that. I don't need to hear that. <laughs> you gotta be careful who you listen to. You gotta be careful who you're talking to. You got to be careful when you're on a journey that you talk to people that can lift you up and not take you down. There were some skeptics back in the day that were standing there listening what he they didn't watch. You see, some people don't come out and follow you and look at your situation to see what's good about it. There are some people that's coming out to see if you're going to fall and see if you're going to fail and see how long it's going to take. But there, you got to be careful when you look at backstabbers and skeptics and doubters that surround your life. They will take away all your hope. Yes, Verse number 34, when uh, Jesus said, uh, where have you laid them? And they said, Lord, come and see. And the Bible said, Jesus wept. And the Jews that loved him said, behold how he loved him. But verse 37, the skeptic says, and some of them, not just one, some, that means a whole lot of people in the crowd, some people in the crowd are not going to be for you. Some people in the crowd are not going to be with you. Some people in the crowd are just going to be a crowd to find out what's going to happen to you. Some people want to hear your story not to bring you comfort. They want to hear your story so they can share your story of defeat, of discouragement and depression. They said... Verse number 37, I just want to read it. And some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused this man that he should not have died? Let me tell you what, did y'all hear that? They didn't focus on what good he has done. I don't care how much good you do, it's gonna be always somebody pulling up some dirt on you. This man who opened the blind eyes, who caused lame to walk, and all they can say, he think he gonna, if he, if he was that bad, he should have stopped this man from dying. You'll never please all the people, so stop trying. You can't make everybody happy, so stop trying. There's gonna be always somebody gonna find something to say about you, talk about you, but don't let that stop you from being who God has called you and what God has called you to do. Always some skeptics, always some spectators, always somebody with got something to say. And, let, and another thing, the folk that got something to say, most of them ain't doing nothing. Why would you listen to folk that ain't got nothing going on? If you do, you're going to let them bring you down. Mm. You better drop some of them skeptics out of your circle. In verse 38, Jesus, groaning with himself, the Bible says, came to the grave. It was a cave and had a stone laid upon it. 
And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha again said, he'd been dead four days. Verse 40, Jesus said to him, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou would believe, you'll see the glory of God. Simple church. No matter what circumstance you come in, no, how, no matter how difficult and possible it said, seems, Jesus said the answer is one thing. Do you believe? God wants you to believe. Satan wants you to doubt. He says, do you believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's going to be a day that all of us are going to face things. The only thing going to save us is our belief. Right. Not our bank accounts. Right. Not our car. Not our job. Not our friends. Only the belief in God will save us. He looks at Mary and Martha. And you know what, Jesus? Let me say something about you. Can I say another thing? I've got to hurry up. But Jesus didn't waste his time talking to the skeptics. He didn't waste his time giving him a piece of his mind. He wasted his time talking. See, sometimes you give people more credit than they believe. Don't talk. Don't waste your time talking to people who don't believe in you. Go oh, Somebody else will. Right, right, right. He didn't say to the skeptics, do you believe? After they had all that crazy to say, he turned to, to Mary Martha, do you believe? Right. See, everybody not going to come to church. <laughs> everybody not going to believe in Jesus. Right. Everybody not going to give. I don't know why you go to church. I don't know why you believe in. I don't know why you do that. I don't know. I believe. Yes, sir. That's why I come. Yes, I believe. That's why I sing. I believe. That's why I pray. I believe. That's why I come to church every Sunday. Because I believe. believe. Yes, sir. And to those who believe, you ought to expect miracles in your life. Right. For those who believe, you ought to expect God to make a way out of no way. For those who believe, you ought to look at dead situations. See, dead situations means there's no hope. Because yeah. last time I checked, dead people can't do nothing. Yeah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, we are dead in our sins and trespasses. Our only salvation comes to Jesus on the cross. Yes, sir. Yeah. And by the way, the story I'm reading is while Jesus was on his way to the cross. He knew he was going to die there. But he stopped to help somebody else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't ever be so caught up in your own situation. Yes, Don't ever be caught up in your own trial that you cannot muster enough strength to help somebody else out. Yes. Don't be so caught up in your own drama and own mission that you don't have time. Jesus on his way to the cross, about to be beat, about to be tried. About to be nailed to a cross, and he has time to stop and help somebody. Yeah. When last time you've been in trouble and you said, I got to stop and help somebody? Yeah. Most time we in trouble, our mind says, I need somebody to help me. Yeah. But Jesus said, he showed us the way. That while he was about to die, he stopped somebody else from dying. Yeah. Oh, to be like Jesus. Not to be so caught up in my story. The only thing I think about is me, myself, and I. Right. That I can stop in a moment in the midst of my trial and bless somebody, help somebody, lift somebody, strengthen somebody, comfort somebody in the midst of my. One last time you've been through your own drama and your own trial bigger than you, that you stop by to help. Oh, that'll be like being like Jesus. Right. On his way to the cross, he stopped in Bethany to the house of Mary and Martha in Lazarus where he had been many times before. In the Bible he said, in the, in the Bible Jesus said to, to, to the people he said to them, uh, in verse 40 he said, uh, verse 41, then he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and to talk with God. The way I get through my trouble, the way I get through my trial, I know there's a new, there have been several since the movie came out in the 80s, what you gonna call, called Ghostbusters. Well, Ghostbusters for TV. 
but you got some real trouble, you got to call on God. Yes, sir. At the grave of Lazarus, what Jesus did, he started talking to heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you go through your trial, you got to stop and mm, start talking to heaven to help you get through your hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Start talking to God in the midst of an impossible situation because in a few days he's going to be on the cross. Y'all know, know he starts talking to God on the cross. You gotta, you gotta have a habit of when stuff happens, you know who to call and who to talk to. The Bible says he started talking to God. And the Bible says that, and, and, and when he had finished talking to the God of heaven, he said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I knew that you would hear me always, but because the people which stand by well, I, you know, and, and the thing about it, this wasn't the first time Jesus did a resurrection. There was Jarvis' daughter. There was the widow of Cain. But the difference in this story is the first time somebody been dead four days. Everybody else had just died and he wrote, well, that wasn't no miracle. That wasn't nothing Jesus did. Jesus saved the best for last when somebody been dead four days. And we all go out to the cemetery. Y'all know something. I'm just going out here to see what this fool's going to do because ain't nothing coming out of this game. They follow, and what they saw, they saw Jesus talk to God before God was about to do a miracle. The Bible says he talked to God, and then he said, he says, Lazarus, come forth. Now watch this for a moment. But he, he could have said, come forth. And everybody in the grave would have come. He had to identify who he was talking to. Right, right, right. He couldn't just say, come forth. Man, a whole army would have came out. Yeah, yeah. He said, Lazarus, yes, sir. Yes, sir. come forth. And the Bible said when he came forth, he was bound in this. I can imagine that's one of the DVDs I'm going to watch or the streaming. I'm going to get to heaven and take a look. I want to see that story, how Lazarus came out the grave Bound, yes, right. all wrapped up. Right. I don't think he was walking. I think he was hopping. Right. <laughs> but he didn't care how he came out. He was just glad to get out. Yeah. And when you come out of your trouble, when you come out of your trial, when you come out of your situation, don't be worried about how you came out. Be glad you came out. I can see some of the skeptics saying, but he ain't walking. <laughs> That's not no miracle. He not walking, he's hopping. Why he's hopping till he can get better. You don't know what it means to be in the grave four days wrapped up. <laughs> to come out on your own by the power of God is something amazing. What Jesus did here was so powerful. The Bible said he came out, verse 44, bound with hand and foot. So he had to be hopping. And Jesus said unto him, loose him. That means take the bandages off and let him go. I just thought about to tell you today that Jesus still moves stones. As I end today, can I talk about stones just for a minute? They're one of the most symbolic things in the Bible, stones. It was David that took five stones out of a small river to fight Goliath who had a spear that weighed 150 pounds. He only needed one stone to take Goliath out, but Goliath had four other brothers. Anybody feel froggy jump? I got one for you too. <laughs> stones are one of the most powerful things in the Bible. In 1 Kings chapter 17, when Elijah was on Mount Carmel, fighting against 450 prophets. The Bible said he put 12 stones representing the 12 tribes. After they tried all they could, you know, Elijah said, y'all go, you go sacrifice your God, I'm gonna sacrifice my God. When Elijah finished his God, took all of them out. 12 stones, amen. When, uh, in, Acts, in Exodus chapter 20, when Moses went up to the mount to talk to God, yes, God brought down two stones, you know, and wrote the Ten Commandments on the stones of one of the most powerful concepts of the Bible, amen. Not the rolling stones, but God's stones, amen. Ah, ah. 
one of the most powerful concepts when we look at the, the uh, Bible is uh, also what uh, Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 30, 31, 31. He says that the New Testament is coming. There'll be a time that God won't write his word on stones, won't write it in our hearts because in your heart is where God wants you to love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. I'm talking about stones, amen. If you understand the concept of stones, your life can change, amen. Then when you see him, you don't get scared. You see him, you don't fall out. You see him, you don't lose your mind. And you got to know the difference between stones, amen. There's some things called stumbling stones. And if you ain't careful, if you ain't careful, they will trip you up. They will take you out. They will have you falling down. Some of us know about some stumbling stones. They've been put in our way to take us out. The devil's a liar. The truth is not in him. He'll do anything to take us out. You got to be careful about stumbling stones. The sins that easily beset us. What the devil will use to take us out. And falling down, we will fall down in this life. Amen. But I like what Nelson Mandela said. He said, don't judge me by the number of times I've fallen down. Judge me by the number of times I got back up, I tell you, with Jesus on my side, I'll always be able to give up. I'll always be able to get back up. Hurry, Gilbert, I got to hurry. I got a whole list of stones to talk about, amen. Yeah, they are stepping stones. A stepping stone is when you come through, you got to take some effort to step a little higher. That's when you're going through something and you come out better uh, when you came out than when you went in. If you ain't careful, a stepping stone could have been a, step, a, a stumbling stone unless you knew how to handle it. That stone being a trouble and a trial in your life, if you know how to handle it, it'll help you get higher instead of bringing you lower. Amen. The wisdom of life, the, the wisdom of life, the education, walking with God will help you understand how to take stumbling stones and make them stepping stones. See, every fall is not a bad one because you learn how something didn't work. The ability to, to get back up, the ability to understand that a stone that could have taken you out is able to lift you up. I like what the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 40, verse number one. He says, I was stuck in the miry clay, but God pulled me out of the clay, set me on a rock. That's a big stone. Gave me a new song. You got to understand that failure don't have to be fatal or final. Fatal or final, Amen. I got to hold on and trust God no matter what because he's more than able. Whew, let me just cover a couple more stones. There is some call a millstone. A millstone, they used to talk about, Jesus said, suffer not the children to come to me. If anybody gets a way of people coming to God, he said it had been better for a, a millstone to be cast on his neck and him thrown into the sea. That means... That's the kind of stuff even the mafia didn't talk about. That'll really take you out. He'll really be sleeping with the fishes. Somebody don't know all that conversation. But, that's, but just ask somebody that. What are you talking about? But a millstone is a burden. You got to avoid the millstones. Things that, 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 that it's almost like one of my favorite shows back in the day was Let's Make a Deal. Y'all know how that show went? You get door number one. Door number two, door number three. Don't pick the door that got the millstone emblem on it. It's going to take you out. It's going to break you down. You'll never rise up again to make it when you got a millstone on your neck. But the thing about it, I want to make sure I find some stepping stones. I want to make sure I avoid some stumbling stones. I want to make sure I don't get any millstones. But I want to end the lesson talking about the cornerstone. The Bible talks about Jesus being the cornerstone. The cornerstone symbolizes stability and security. The cornerstone is that stone laid in the foundation of a building that everything else is built on top of. Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. For in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says, There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the cornerstone. Brother Gilbert, why is that important? Because in your life, in my life, what have we decided to be the cornerstone? Somebody says, well, if I win that billion dollar lottery, 
Look, if you play, let me just make an announcement for the behalf of Sheldon Church of Christ and Leonardo Vigil. If you play, uh, and it was your rent money, we'll ask you whatever sin you may commit it. But when you get it, bring your time and offerings of at least 10%. You bring less than 10, I don't know if God's going to forgive you, but if you get like $600 million, that bring 10%. I pray over you, teach you, and help you. We'll take a confession there. And it helps. But the point is, hear me carefully as I come to an end. What is the cornerstone of your life? Is it money? It's going to fail. If it's a job, one day you're going to have to stop. Is the relationship. What is the cornerstone? What is the cornerstone of your life that you're building everything on that means everything to you? Because whatever that cornerstone is, that's going to be the place you have your stability and your security. And if you got it in the wrong place when the storms rage, Jesus talked about in Matthew 7, you can build your house on the rock or the sand. If you build on the rock of Jesus Christ, that chief cornerstone, then when the winds come, you'll be all right. But if you build it on your 401k, on the gold and silver you got, the diamonds and gold, the friendships who you know in high places, that cornerstone may last for a while. It It may even give you some good things in this life. But I guarantee you, it won't help you get to the next life. I'm talking about stones. When I mentioned this this morning for those old school Chicago, I'm talking about the stones of the the gangsters called the black stone. I'm talking about, damn, I had to clear it up this morning. Somebody say, wait, we're talking about stones this morning? No, I'm talking about godly stones. Not ungodly stones. All I'm saying today, build your life on the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ. You may face death. You may face disappointment. You may face depression. You may face discouragement. But when you build on the cornerstone, even if you die and it's been four days, you can look with Jesus and bring you back. (laughs) If he don't bring you back down here, he shouldn't bring you back up there. Because heaven is on the other side. That's why I keep coming to church. That's why I put my trust in the chief cornerstone. That's why I know he's still moving stones of this life. Stones of trouble and storms and trial and tribulation. He still moves stones. And the question is, do you believe? If you're standing this morning, as we sing the song of invitation, he still moves stones. For somebody, it's time to move the stone that's been stopping you from being a Christian. The stone that's been stopping you from being who God wants you to be. The stone has been trying to take you out. It's time to call on him and say, Lord, help, because we need you now more than we've ever needed you before. There's somebody today for baptism, somebody today that's been thinking about walking with God for the rest of your life. This is your good day, and what a better day to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior than on Easter Sunday. What a day to give your life to him, give your hand to the one that comes up, your heart to God, and we'll baptize you on today. But somebody else. You're going through something. You've been through something. You're tri- challenged by something. And, 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 the, and the stone you're facing is about to take you out. But I stop by to tell you, if you believe in God, ask the prayers of the saints. We can help you get through what you're going through. Whatever your need may be, we're going to sing the song of invitation at this time. Give me a song to sing. That's the one. Like Jesus. My Lord, one day I'm facing a terrible storm. Lord, give me my boy. Give me the words. Even when the enemies at my table in the midst of Give me a song. Give me a song. 
Someone today for prayer, someone for baptism. Oh, a song like Jesus.
God bless you. Come in and thank you. All right. for we needed that song on this morning. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. And Brother Gilbert, what can I say? Yeah. God is moving stones back then. He's still moving stones today. All right. All right. All right. He's trying to say he is busy. I learned something this morning from the youth Easter program. They had a picture of the sunlight. Sunshine coming up over the, over the horizon of the lake. And it just reminds me that, you know, that sun, the S O N, is risen. So every time you look at a sunrise, think about not the S U N, but the S O N. That sun always rises, and he's always there for us. We have a lot of, well, like Brother Carter would say, a plethora of cards. And, uh, Bear with me because so, so it's a lot of information on some of these cards, so bear with me. Uh, Sister uh, Zola Upchurch is here asking for prayer for the Bowles, the Sanders Upchurch families, and uh, she's a uh, resident of 1340 Ring Road as well. Pray for them as well. We'll be doing that. Amen. Sister Nicole Robinson is here today asking for prayer. And she wants to thank the church for the prayers, the calls, and the flowers, and the passing of her mom. Amen. Sister Nidra Ray, please continue to pray for that family and for her as well. Amen. Pat Wilson is here today. Is that Wilson? Wilson? Okay. Pat Wilson is here today asking for prayer. She wants to thank God for allowing uh, my son, BJ, in Florida to Uber me to come to church today. God bless you. That's a good thing. We got Uber now. Come on in. She Ubered you a whole year. Come on. Woo, do it. Audrey Montgomery is here today asking for prayer for her granddaughter, London. So she, she was in a car accident on Friday. And she seriously hurt, so keep London in your prayers. Praise God. And thank you, Brother Gilbert, for that wonderful sermon on today. Yes, amen. Brother McAdams, Jack, is here today to confess sin in his life. He's also asking for prayer. Uh, he says, Brother Gilbert, thanks for that message. And he also asked me prayer for the McAdams family and for tests on this week. Chandra Klinkscales is here today to ask me for prayer. He's asking prayer for Sanaya, and she will have her six-month follow-up, MRI and EEG, on tomorrow. Amen. Continue to pray for her. Amen. Sister Hibbert is here today asking for prayers for her brother, Robin Locke, and my brother-in-law, William Leach. We'll be praying for him as well. Brother, Dur brother Darrell and Sister Tanya, Williams uh, asking for prayer. One of their great nephews passed away. Just keep that family lifted up in prayer. The Williams family. Brother Jeff Gaines is here today. Gales is here today asking for prayer. He would like to thank everyone for your kindness shown to her family in the, in the passing of his brother. May God continue to bless you and keep us and keep us in your prayers. We'll be doing that. God bless you. Amen. Brother Claude Reed is here today. To confess sin in his life, he's also asking for prayer. He's asking, he says, face and favor and grace and mercy, and deliverance from evil for his family and friends that they have peace in their life. Sister Naomi Major is here today. She's here to confess sin in her life. She's asking for prayer, asking for prayer for her entire family for strength, guidance, and to get closer to the Lord. Michelle Cooper is here today. She's also asking for prayer. She says, praise God for his son, Jesus. My grandson, Willie, is that Willie Will? Will and William. Will and William. And William Banks ask for prayers. Pray for her entire family. Thank you, Brother Gilbert, for that powerful message as well. Uh, Jordan Kathy is here today asking for prayer. We'll be doing that. Amen. Sister Donna May is here today asking for prayer pray for her family and herself, and she began therapy on today. 
She the Gray is here asking for prayer uh, for the Simmons family, also for her niece, who her mom has passed. Keep that family lifted up in prayer. A lot of bereavement in this, in this, in this world going on at this time. Wanda Hall is here today asking for prayer and to confess sin. She's like thanking God for his grace and his mercy. And he thanks Brother Gilbert for that powerful message. Amen. Amen. We know that we're living in perilous times. And we always need a Savior. We know where we can go to get that Savior. Get a close personal relationship with God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Father in prayer at this time. Father God, we approach your throne in the most humble manner that we know how. We fully submit to your will and your submissive way. Because we know that through you all things are possible. We know, Father God, not to put our trust in man, but to put our trust in you, Lord. Because if we do that, trust in the Lord with all our heart, and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Lord, please hear our prayers as we search for help and clarity dealing with our specific areas of restoration we need in our lives. Amen. Heal our bodies, our, our, our minds, our mental state, our emotional state, our spiritual well-being, our broken relationships, our families, our finances. Please, Father God, bless us with more faith, hope, and love as we run this Christian race. Praying, God, that your grace and mercy and love will be with us as we continue to strive to do your will. Let us try to do more in 2024. You heard our, our query request on the day for those that have lost loved ones, those that have fell in short, fall short of the glory of God, for those that are praying for their family members. Please bless them all in a special way, those that are going to the hospital for tests, those that are sick at home in their nursing homes. Bless them, give them comfort in their time of need. Also, Father God, we know what a powerful God we serve. You are an awesome God. You are a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. My God, that's who you are. Father God, please praise in your name. Lord, thank you for your blood that you gave to cleanse our sins and establish your church here on the earth where we can find peace and salvation. If we follow your word, do your will, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the redeemed say, Amen. Good morning, Cheryl Knights. What a blessing to be back out to Heights once again. Oh, yeah. And 
and look, Brother, give a thank for that powerful message this morning. And we certainly want to acknowledge our visitors this morning who's visiting in the audience at the Shelton Nice Church of Christ and online. Welcome to the Shelton Nice Church of Christ, where our Lord, our love will draw you in and our Lord will lift you up. It's time to remember our Lord and Savior once again. So at this time, let our minds refer back to the cross. Now we come down this part of service, taking the Lord's Supper. We find in Acts 20 and 7 that upon the first day of the week, the Lord's disciples met together to break bread. The Apostle Paul continued to teach us in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, again in verse 23, ending with verse 26. For I received the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, same night which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in the members of me. After the same man also, he took it a cup. At the sub saying, This cup is his New Testament in my blood. This do ye as of you drink it in the members of me. For of you eat this bread and drink this cup. We do unto the Lord's death until he come. Let us go to our Father in prayer. County Heaven Father, we thank you for this bread and this cup that symbolizes your body and blood that you gave and shared on Calvary's cross. That us Christians might take it with clean hands and pure hearts and look to Jesus and offer the offense to our faith. Father God, you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. You sent your one and only begotten son to share his precious blood on Calvary's cross so that we would not perish but have a chance to everlasting life. Amen. Father God, we cannot ever thank you enough for all you have done for us. There's not enough pencil and paper to write down all the blessings you have given out over a portion of time. So Heavenly Father, when we go on the last mile of wave, we ask thee to give us a peace with a happy home with thee. This be enough, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And take care. collection, the scripture for collection, be 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 8. But before I read that and before the brothers get ready to pass the basket, I want to continue to thank each and every one of you all for your just faithfulness of giving. Because without your giving, we can't do all the wonderful things that we do this church whether it's locally or the international missions that we do. So we don't take it for granted. And if I was to say a, a, something unusual, um, Brother Willie Carter was flowers for a collection appeal, a theme I would say, it's a heart thing. Heart, heart, thing. heart is H-E-A-R-T, <laughs> a heart thing. You know what I mean when I come to the verse. So chapter 9, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose in his heart. Oh, there's that heart thing. The purpose in your heart. It's what you feel in your heart and your giving. Yes. You don't have to look at that 20%, 10%, what your heart says. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Yes, sir. So when we give, I hope y'all got a smile on your face. 
We want it in a loving way, in a cheerful way. And in verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Let us go at this time for our Father in prayer. Father God, we come in a humble way approaching your throne of grace and mercy. For God, you are the one who made it possible for us today to see this day. We know as we give you the praises of all your blessings to shower us coming down. And we're so thankful. Lord, we thank you for our ways and means of income. We just kind of hold it on to what you already own. Yep. And so we are to be obedient and to give back. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Yes. Certainly to help those who may be less fortunate than we are. So Father God, we hope that this collection funds will be used. Used in a way that's pleasing to you. Use in a way to uplift your kingdom, Lord, so that we will be pleased with us, so that we may be your good and favored servants. And so we thank you again. This prayer we offer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, glory belongs to you. Father, glory belongs to you. Oh, God, help me sing.
Let's praise the Lord. Amen. One of the greatest voices outside of Sheldon, out, out of Sheldon Heights, the great Christian Hampton on national TV, singing across the country, across, and he is a member here. Amen. When you get to heaven, I want you to know that those you see in this audience will be leading song service up in heaven from the heights. Amen. Hallelujah. What a talent, what ability we have for some of the group. We got song leaders sitting on the bench. They'll be leading songs somewhere else. Amen. What a blessing today we've had an Easter service. This is the pinnacle of Christianity. It's where Jesus paid a cost. He didn't owe because we owed a cost we couldn't pay. What a blessing that he's still moving stones. First of all, I want to acknowledge the visitors. I'm sure we got enough. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of visitors, got a lot of moving parts going on right now. I see the youth are coming up from youth service. They got a special announcement to make. We're going to recognize them in a minute. But if you're visiting with us and you're sitting to this side, the left side, stand up. If you're visiting, someone invited you. You're here at the Heights, and this is your visit. We're glad you're here. Just stand on up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Heights, Brother Gilbert says. Y'all keep our eye on the visitors, and we're going to greet them when service over. What about this section over here? Anybody over this section visiting? Just stand on up. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here today. You're an honored guest of the Sheldon Heights Church of Christ. We're glad you're here. We're going to greet you when our service So Anybody in this section? That's visiting with us today. Just stand on up. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody in this section? Let me see. That section must be friendly. This section. This is Y'all got to be more friendly together. And I know I see some faces over there. They're not standing. We're glad to have you. What about all the way to my right? Anybody on this side, all the way to my right visiting. We want to recognize you. Just stand up wherever you are. The balcony. Praise the Lord. Anybody up there? Amen. On the front row. Amen. Glad to have you all. Those are the people we got to shake hands and let them know this is a place you come where our love just draws you in and our Lord will lift you up. Now, we have a few packets for those that are baptized, those who place membership. Uh, we have a packet for you if you're here, if you'll, if you'll come up. Uh, I have a packet for uh, Landon Roberts. Is he here? I don't know if he's here or not. Landon about to be the next preacher to Sheldon High Church of Christ. He dressed like a preacher, talked like a preacher. <laughs> All right. Do we have also with us uh, Brenda Horde? Are you in the audience? Where you are today? Are you in the audience today? Amen. Uh, do we have in the, Sister Sharon Prickett? Are you in the audience? I know she uh, plays membership here. We want to make sure everybody gets a gift from the Heights. Amen. Brittany Prickett, are you here? Okay, Brother Gilbert, going down the list. Uh, Sister Severe. Are you in the audience? You can raise your hand. We'll bring it to you. Okay. And now, uh, what about that singing baptized man, Mikhail Riggins? Are you in the audience? There he comes. With the Easter shirt on. Come on up here. That's all I have today. If those taking pictures, grab a quick picture. And we're just glad to have these are two strong young men. One is a singer, one's a preacher. Y'all encourage them now. Somebody got it? Somebody got a picture right here? Oh, we don't have our picture man. They want you to look over this way. Look everywhere. The Lord got us. Deacon Sherrod, will you come up right now? We're about to, about to go home. We got one last acknowledgement. Uh, the deacon and his wife, amen. We got an announcement to make. Y'all hurry now. Hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yesterday at the basketball tournament, all I got is hoop dreams. And we got young people. They won first place. They represent the Heights. This is the Hoopers. Competed in the Easter tournament, 
and with a total of zero practices, <laughs> uh, we were able to uh, bring home the trophy. Bring home. Uh, yeah. So I want to thank my top assistant um, for all his all his assistance, and then uh, I also want to thank the people that uh, were gracious enough to donate. We had we were not only the best team, but we were also the best dressed. <laughs> Really nice uniforms. So thank you all for uh, contributing on, in that regard, and we're gonna try to keep this going. So uh, all the young men did a great job, and we actually had a, another young man, the twins. They weren't here today, uh, but Michael Graham was the Mike. Michael Graham. Thank you. Who <laughs> was the MVP? was an MVP, and so we're gonna bring it back again next year. So thank you all. Thank you. Oh, and TJ played in the bitty ball, and he scored two baskets. <laughs> Big hand for champions. Easter tournament representing Sheldon Heights. Give me a big hand again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank y'all very much. Stand on your feet as we're about to be dismissed. One final song. What we got coming? After the storm. Oh, that's legendary. It is over. Craig Hart. Yes. After the rain. Have come down after the clouds have passed over and the dew lies softly on the ground. Now I've had my share. Of heartaches, yeah, and being tossed about mm -hmm, from side to side, whoa, whoa, into each life, a little rain must fall, but the sun, the sun. will shine. Church of Christ and Bourbonnet Church of Christ. They've been here since 6 this morning and they still here, so God bless y'all for being with us today. Um, after church, uh, the youth ministry is giving away bags for the youth as they exit the door, so please stop by and see Sister Franklin and the ministry team as you exit out the door. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious Father, we just say thank you for our resurrection day. The day that we sit back, that the world might acknowledge you today, Lord, but we acknowledge you every day for what you have done and sacrificed for all of us. 
And Lord, we just continue to pray for you that you can continue to remove those stones that come our way as we just continue to have that trust and faith in you. Lord, we just ask that you bless us and keep us safe as we go through the remaining this week throughout whatever trials might come our way that we continue to just hold on to you. God bless us and keep us till we meet to the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.